everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. Welcome to my very special video for International Scrapbook Day 2022. I am going to be doing a walkthrough of this fabulous book, then I'm going to do a tutorial on how you can make it. It's a very simple book and I started the process very simply. It's it's a beginner's guide, but of course if you are an experienced mini album maker, then you might want to take some of the ideas from this and make something for yourself. I used this fabulous collection called Let's Get Crafty from Simple Stories. Obviously you can see it has beautiful bright colors and it was so so fun to work with, especially for something uh, for today. Um, the other exciting thing about this is it is a craft room tour. So as you can see, it is going to be a tour. And you may know that I live and craft in my RV. I travel across the country and I have a craft room. And a lot of people have asked me what, what it's like and how I have it organized. So today is the day that I show you the inside of my uh, craft room, of my happy pit place. So to make the cover, I do have some pink card stock from my stash, orange below it. This uh, cutting board looking stuff was one of the papers and so was this gorgeous orange, pink and white plaid. These elements are from the sticker sheet. And when I printed out my photos from my Canon selfie, you also can print out words. I don't have any other letters and I really didn't feel like getting out my Cricut to cut out the letters, but I printed that. Uh, along with my photos. So that's where I got the, the words room and tour. So that is how I made the cover. There is the spine and there is the back. There is this fabulous paper with the hexagons, which I love. I really need to get a punch for that. And then I added my um, Project 39 sticker with my Etsy shop and my website. So um, just so people know. And then this, of course, is where I live, and I have another picture inside. So let's take you inside and show you what's going on. So I did put inside this front cover uh, a couple of cut-aparts. There is this Live Life in Color. This is, uh, actually it was a 3x4 or 4x4 four four actually cut-apart that I fussy cut around that. It's a stack of mini albums. And it just sort of went really well with that. And these were other cut aparts. Don't you love that paint strip? Um, and then this is one of the drawers I have, but I'll get into that later. So that again is another cut apart. And then there are these fun uh, tags that were also in one of the sheets. Uh, Simple Stories has been doing these tags and it's fabulous. I was actually going to put little photos on this strip of tags but I decided the photos needed to be a little bigger. Speaking of photos, let me take you inside and show you a little bit of what we have. One of the four by six cut aparts was this Let's Get Crafty. It says a Simple Stories publication. It looks like a magazine. And I thought that was fun. So I made a folder out of that um, and I put it on some pink cardstock just so the colors would pop. So there is my home. Um, and I'm not going to apologize anymore for the glare. I will do it once and then I will do my best to make sure that glare doesn't get in your way. So there, there it is. It is a 40 foot Grand Design Solitude. It has a bunk room in it in addition. Up here is the master bedroom. Back here is the kitchen, living room, dining room area. The, the living room has a pull out couch so if we have company there's room there and the center area has a bathroom and a bunk room and above the bunk room is a loft and the bunk room is what I have called my home. So here is a picture of the bunk room with the beds taken out. There was a jackknife bed on the bottom and a, a bunk on the top. So if you had two kids they would sleep in there perfectly fine. But obviously that's a long shelf. It's probably about six feet long and then there's two Ikea drawers and that forms the basis of my storage and I will show you what is in those drawers as we go along but that is truly my happy place. Um, this is so there's two sides to this and if I I don't want to 
confuse you. So this is the kitchen island sort of taken from below and that's there's a um, two-seater recliner there TVs over here and that is a couch with the pull-out bed over here a little further here is where the kitchen or the uh, dining area is so from from the other side there's the kitchen island the refrigerator storage coffee pot important important things so anyhow, that is my home. We do not have a sticks and bricks, which is what we call a, um, a regular house any longer. We sold it once we went on the road. I have uh, hidden pockets in this mini album and inside them I put photocopies of my um, crafty planner. And what I do is I do plan ahead of time for what I want to complete for each month. This is February's, there's January's, I'll just go over February's and it tells the collections that I have, the YouTube collabs that I have, and then the other things that I want to do. I, there is my goals. One of my goals is to use it up, and I'm really trying to use up all the paper that I have. So I won't go into too much detail, but I will tell you that it is important to stay organized. So anyhow, that goes in the pocket. And this is really a very easy mini album to make. So if you've wanted to make a mini album, this is going to be a good tutorial for you if you've not made one before. Immediately to my left is this set of drawers. I have it, uh, whoops, I guess you can't see it. If I do this, it's better. Um, the upper layer has all of the tools that I use, and I'll show you that a little bit later. The lower layer has my ATG. I've got spacers here. I've got glue, and I've got my um, smaller cutting board. These were elements from the chipboard stickers, and these are just from the ephemera pack. Here's another chipboard sticker on this belly band, and this was from a 4x4 cut apart. I cut this 4 inches wide and about 2 inches and put one of the, um, I guess that was a sticker. No, it was from the embellishment pack. I, it might be bits and pieces, I'm not sure. And then this gives you a little better detail of where that little cutting board is, where the glue is, um, markers that I use pretty often. This is um, a pad that I use for when I'm doing my uh, mini albums. You know, I write down the measurements in there. To my right, one of the drawers has my punches. So it's got my hole punch and my corner chomper and my crock crop a dial um, and that kind of thing. The thing about this drawer is when it gets full I have to get rid of something and I did recently buy a couple of new punches so I'm going to have to have a de-stash. There's only so much room here and I really go by the theory if something comes in something's got to go out. So that is just life in an RV. I'm not going to take you through these pockets it's just more of those planner sheets. Here is um, my desk space when I am uh, working on a project. I picked these up from a uh, retailer that had these. They were throwing out their fixtures, so that was fabulous. But there are plastic ones that probably are better, and if I didn't have these, I would consider getting those. Anyhow, there's a page of these flowers on the bottom. We'll pull up this flap, and directly behind me, and I'll show you a better picture of it later, but there is um, three drawers. And if you had kids living in here, instead of having shelves, there's hangers up at the top. There's a rod, so you would hang clothes up there. But we've put shelves in, and that is where I put, oh, there's pieces of chipboard. There's painting supplies here, metal embellishments, um, ribbon, Tyvek and envelopes and stuff for shaker cards. Um, that's stuff that I give away in with my Etsy orders. And of course, there's my alcohol markers. Really small. I know it's hard to see, but I guess the whole gist of it is that I have to stay organized and everything needs to be contained. If it wasn't in these containers and we were moving, you open the cabin and everything's going to fall out. So it's really important to be organized when you're in an RV. And let me tell you, I am not naturally organized. It's taken some time. Um, again, directly behind me was this cabinet. 
Oh, here, let me let me pop forward. So here's this cabinet. It was an Ikea cabinet. I think it was like a scratch and dent sale. Um, and above that, there was... So this is it supposed to be a desk. It was down lower, so if you had a kid and they did homeschool, they would have their own desk. But my husband moved that up, and that's where our printer lives. And there's the cabinet that I was talking about that you would put kids' clothes there and kids' clothes here. But it's all art supply. So you open up that Ikea cabinet, and this is where I keep all of my 12 by 12 paper. If it doesn't fit in here, I don't have it, unless I'm working it. The bottom is all loose um, cardstock. Here is a better picture of it. I just like the rainbow effect. Then there is uh, packages of cardstock. Then there are oh, maybe eight or ten uh, pads. And then there is maybe 10 or 12 um, collection packs, which is up here. And I'll probably be working on these next. This is Doodlebug. I think it's called The Great Outdoors. And there's another one. I think this is Cartabella, The Great Outdoors. I think that's what it is. I'm not positive. But anyhow, that's where I keep all of that. And plus I have those plastic containers. Um, like one is Christmas. One is specialty paper like glitter or textured paper or whatever. One is single sheets. This one's camping stuff. Uh, uh, six by six paper packs and that's cooking family pets. Um, this year my goal is to go through all six of these containers and reduce the amount and I've gone through two completely and um, I have a lot less than I did. I still have the four to go through and it's almost June so I need to get get crafting. So that is a little more of a close-up of all of my paper. This is that uh, organizational drawer that I have right to the left of me. It's above this one. See that ruler? Uh, oh, you don't see it. The ruler is just down here. What it is is a, a thick fun foam that I cut specifically to hold all of those tools. It does two things. Number one, when we move, those tools don't roll around and they stay where they are. Uh, well, it does three things. Number two, I, I can reach them just almost blindly and I know that I'm going to hit my bone folder or my scissors or whatever. And number three, at the end of the day, I make sure everything gets put back. And that way, if I don't have a bone folder, then I have to look for it. So that way nothing gets thrown out uh, by accident. So I love this organizational method. Um, I had to do it a couple of times just to make sure I had everything I need. But that was one of the fun things that I, I made. Another organizational tool is these coupon books that I have my stamps in. Um, there's six of them, seven, and they're starting to get full. I need to start getting rid of some. I, again, if it co something comes in, something's got to go out. So, you, so wait for a D stash. Okay, we've already gone through that. Um, this usually isn't that clean, no. I usually keep my die cutting machine here and uh, it's also where I put my Etsy orders together. Uh, I have something up on the wall that has all the, the, the miscellaneous things I put in my Etsy orders. So there is that. Don't you love that little typewriter? And this is the drawers to the direct right to me. There's my eight and a half by 11 card stock. There are my punches that you see again. And then the next drawer is my stamps and stamp pads and blending tools and ink and that kind of thing. And then finally, right above where I work is a loft. And that is where I keep my products for my Etsy store. My husband has it organized in such a way that when I get an order, he can immediately go and grab what he needs. He hands it to me and I box it up and ship it out. And if, if this wasn't supplies for Etsy, that's where you could put more kids. If you had more kids, you have this great loft. I mean, you could easily put three little kids up there. And there's a lot of, uh, this goes across so they don't fall. And this is the ladder for it. And then again, that right here is the door to my craft room. It's a big mirror. And then inside this pocket are just a couple of leftover cards and ephemera and whatever I haven't used yet. 
they are on the cut apart sheet and I think they're, isn't that adorable? I think they're cool. There is my studio when I'm recording, my, my ring light, my camera, my microphone, and my computer. So I try to keep the area clean so um, it makes it easier to record. And that is where I live and work and travel. And following is the tutorial on how to make this cute little mini album. It's five by seven. Uh, I used one pack of the Let's Get Crafty, the collection kit. I used chipboard elements and a um, little ephemera pack as well. And uh, some coordinating cardstock for my stash, but you can buy the coordinating cardstock as well to go with it. So if you are going to stick around and do the tutorial, let's do it. And if not, thanks so much for joining us. All right, now let's get to that tutorial. All right, we are making the cover. You will need two pieces of chipboard, uh, medium or heavy weight, not lightweight, five and a half by seven and a half. And you will need one piece for the spine that's two by seven and a half. Now I have already put permanent double-sided adhesive and burnished it real well just to make sure that we have a good stick on all three of those pieces. Now I've got some cardstock. This is, um, I think it's 65 or 70, 72 pound. Um, it's not a real heavyweight cardstock. I would not go higher than a hundred pound then it gets harder to fold so um, I'm using white which I probably shouldn't because it's bad for the video but um, it's good for the book all right and I already put a quarter inch of permanent adhesive on one side I'm using my um, what do you call self-healing mat to help line things up I'm gonna go ahead and grab the uh, backing paper off of the double-sided adhesive and you can see where that shine is from the tape I'm going to put that to the right of this blue line this is my blue center line and I'm lining the top of this up to this other line then I'm going to take this oh and by the way I'm sorry I didn't tell you this cardstock is uh, eight and a half by ten inches and I put the tape on the ten inch side and I'm going to take the other side that's ten inches and line it up with that blue line all the way down so I get a good even uh, piece of paper so now this this paper is uh, about 17 inches if you have a 17 inch paper then cut it down by 10 and you're good but most people don't have that in their closet okay so here's the thing you can see the edge of the paper facing you you cannot see the edge of the paper on the other side but it's just about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the paper if I make a line I don't know if that'll show you a little more an indentation to show you where it is well, you can see it here there's a little shadow so that's where it is this should be the center in your put it in the center of your spine so when you put the spine down you want to try to get that centered if you don't it's no big deal it is not the end of the world all right I'm going to peel off the backing paper of my permanent double-sided adhesive and I'm going to try to put this down as straight as I can trying to center it again on where the edge of the paper is on the other side does that make sense if you don't it is not the end of the world if you don't center it that way all right I'm going to put that down and then I'm going to grab more quarter inch permanent double-sided adhesive and I'm going to line it up right against the edge of this chipboard spine and then all the way from top to bottom of that paper And then I'll take my bone folder and burnish. 
And you know, the more you burnish double-sided adhesive, the easier it is to get that backing paper up. And in addition, you want to burnish the double-sided adhesive as best you can because it you don't want air pockets to get underneath it. That is the kiss of death for uh, a permanent stick. And I'm talking like 10 years down the road. If you get an air pocket, then, then things start loosening from there. So try not to get an air pocket. That's why you want to burnish every chance you get. All right, I am going to take the backing off and I am going to lay this down to the right of that spine right up against the edge of our quarter inch tape. Right up against the edge of that. That quarter inch tape does two things. The first thing it does is it makes sure that you have something to determine what a quarter of an inch is. And the other thing is it helps hold it down. And the other thing is, as you'll see later, it will help us um, get a good stick when we're put it folding over the paper. And also to keep the hinge mechanism on there. All right, so I've got that down. I'm going to take the side of my phone folder and burnish that real well. Now, some people like to take their bone folder and find the edge of the paper and go like that. What I like to do is just take it and put it against my table and fold it so you've got the fold where you want it. But before we worry about that, grab scissors. I have a pair of long bladed scissors and I'm going to cut this corner but I want to stay an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the chipboard. At least an eighth of an inch. Maybe a little bit more. Now, if for some reason you find you have come too close to the chipboard, no fear. It's only paper for one thing. For another thing, all you have to do is take one of these corners you just cut out and glue it down and you won't see that chipboard. Just a little little secret. All right, now I'll fold this down against the edge of my surface, my table, just to help the, the folding process. But we're going to start with the long side. I'm going to try to turn it this way so you can see everything I do going to take my glue, making sure it'll come out now, and I will go right next to that chipboard and put a bead of glue all the way down next to that chipboard. Then I'll also, I like to go along the edge just to make sure I get good coverage along the edge and then fill in. You don't have to go crazy. Number one, you're going to cover everything. One of the reasons I like to put the liquid adhesive down next to where I'm going to fold is I believe that it, the moisture of the glue uh, helps the fibers in the paper loosen up and fold without cracking. Now I'm uh, burnishing as I fold it all the way down. Now if you get glue seeping out there, I have a paper towel that I'm just going to wipe up a little. So just burnish and make sure you've moved that glue around and you've got a good stick. I'm going to do the same with this other side. So all the way down, oops, on the edge, and then I zigzag it to complete. And then push my bone folder up against it. And then I pull it over with my fingers as I'm also using my bone folder to move the glue. And just push it down. And I 
There you go. Did anyone else see this drop of glue here? And I guess I can clean that up too. So there we go. All right, now before we pull down the short side, I'm going to zoom in. Hang on one second. There's this little triangle showing here. And I'm just going to take my bone folder and push that in. If I have glue, I'm going to wipe it off before I touch it. So again, here, see there is a triangle of paper that is after the chipboard. Let me see. Here's the triangle. And I am going to take this, I could take this point of the bone folder, and just push that in. I'm going to do it with this side also. Whoops. I forgot I zoomed in that much. That side also. And here also. All right, that'll help you so you don't see the edge of the chipboard. So now I'm going to add glue right next to the chipboard and fold this flap over pushing the glue right up against that chipboard piece. Just work the glue in. Make sure you've spread it all throughout that little tab. And then we'll do the other side. Another bead of glue. Fill it in. You don't need too much glue. You need just enough to make sure it sticks. And then I'll again take my bone folder, push it down, spread the glue all around, and make sure we've got a good stick. All right, looks good. Now another thing I like to do at this point is to take the book and put it, I'm making sure there's no glue, I'm cleaning up all the glue and making sure it's burnished. So I'm taking the edge of my bone folder and going against the top or all the edges of the glue. Instead of having a rounded edge, it squares it off. And in my mind, it makes it look crisp and finished looking. I can bend at the spine, but right now I'm going to take it, make sure my bone folder is clean. And I'm using the blunt edge of the bone folder. I'm going to take it, if you don't have a bone folder, use whatever tool you have that's got a good blunt edge. I'm going to push down on the outer paper so it meets with the paper on the other side. And what's happening is the two uh, pieces of double-sided adhesive are meeting and they will adhere. And I'll fold my book and make sure that uh, it's a nice, crisp, clean fold as well. I'll do it with the other side, just gently. You don't want to push too hard. I'd rather go over it three or four times rather than do once and, and get a tear in it. If you do get a tear, it's happened before to me, I'll just take a piece of paper and put it right over the top and you'll never see. So now we are done. And isn't it pretty? So that is our mini album cover. Now we'll cover all these uh, cart chipboard with paper later on. And you see it's not perfectly even, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cover it. So anyhow, that is the cover. We are going to next start making the hinge. So don't leave, don't get scared. This is really easy, but I'll come back with the measurements for the paper for the hinge. Don't go anywhere. This is an example of five hinges. Each hinge is half an inch, and there is a three-eighths of an inch gusset in between each of the hinges. There is a wing on both sides. I call it a wing. It's what I use to hold everything when I'm putting it down to the paper. So to make a hinge, you're going to have two sets, or, or one set of half inch paper, and then you'll have the three-eighths of an inch gusset. So when you score, you'll score half an inch, half an inch, three-eighths. Half an inch, half an inch, three-eighths. And for however many pages you're going to have in your book. So 
let us, I just want to explain that before we went ahead. So now let us get started making a hinge. Okay, my paper is seven inches by 11 and I am going to have five pages or five hinges in the book with three eighths of an inch in between. So I'm going to do two sets of hinges and then go through and do the others. You might want to write down the numbers and then go through and do it yourself. So we will start at two inches. I need another half inch, so I'll go to two and a half. And I need another half inch, so I'll go to three. That is our first set of hinges, first set for the hinge. Then I'll do a three eighths gusset to go three and three eighths. Then we need another half an inch, so we go to three and seven eighths and then four and three eighths. So that's your second set of lines for a hinge. Then we'll go four and three quarters, five and one quarter, five and three quarters, six and one eighth, seven and seven, I'm sorry, seven and five eighths, seven, sorry, six and five eighths. I'll go back over it in a second. Six and five eighths, seven and an eighth, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. So let me go over it so you can write it down. Two, two and a half, three, three and three eighths, three and seven eighths, four and three eighths, four and seven eighths, five and a quarter, five and three quarters, six and an eighth, six and five eighths, seven and one eighth, seven and a half, eight and eight and a half. All right, did you get that? So I have the indentations. You can see the indentations. If you turn it over, there are the bumps. But one more time. So this is a hinge, that's a hinge, that's a gusset. Hinge, hinge, gusset. So in between each set of hinges is a score line. What I want you to do is turn the paper over so we've got the bumps facing up and fold five times in between each half inch piece. So in between each set of hinges. And when you fold it, I want you to burnish it. So here's the first half inch. Here's the second half inch. I'm going to fold right in between those two. I'm going to make sure the paper is even on the sides. Oops. And then burnish. So now I'll go to the next set of half inch hinges, make sure it's even, and burnish. That's two, let's do number three, number four. If you fold on the wrong one, no big deal, just unfold it and go find the right one. That's four, and then the last set is at the end of the paper and we're folding on between those two half inch hinges. Now I'm turning it again the right side up and so we've got slight mountains. You can see slight mountains facing up. You see the little shadows. All right, the way I do the next part is I use my fingers and I hold down the paper at the top with my fingers and then I, I have my thumb. So now I'm going to switch pressure and I'm holding my thumb down and I'm going to take the paper with my fingers and get that mountain to come up higher till it's really about an inch off of the, the ground and then grab that mountain so it's those two half inch pieces pinch between your fingers and fold back and forth. Now it's not going to stay that way but it, we're training the paper. Now I'm going to start from holding that and pull towards me and get the next set of hinges. Now if you've burnished it makes it easier. So make sure you've burnished real well. Do the next set, grab it and you're just folding those two half inch pieces first one way and then the other. We're going to do set number four and then set number five. I'm 
pinching them together so they're flat against each other and then I'm folding on those score lines. Now I'm going to pull it all together, which is a trick in itself, but now you see all the hinges. I'm holding it down so I'm not going any higher. I'm going to push them all down away from me. I'm going to grab my bone folder while I'm holding it down and burnish. Then I'm going to take them and pull them towards me and burnish. All right, so they're not they're not permanent, but they're um, they're they're getting trained. Now we're going to add glue. All right, let's take and turn it over. So all those mountains are now valleys because they're away from us. So what I'm going to do is taking one set of hinges at a time. I'm going to add glue, probably about three lines of glue. Oops, I went too far. Went into the gusset. I don't want that there. I'm going to clean that up. And then I'm going to turn it upside down. Wait, let me get my little... I just want... You could just use a piece of paper, but I don't want the glue to get my, my work surface. Now I'm going to pinch it again so that glue will hold. If any comes out, just clean it up. So I have glue... So we'll do it again. Turn it upside down. Add glue. I sort of go down to the very bottom, up in the middle, and then towards the top, but you don't want to go onto the gusset. I mean, it's no big deal. Just clean it up. Then I turn it over and I pinch those together, especially making sure you get near the bottom. And then there we go. All right, so I will do the other ones. By um, pinching them without glue, that will train the paper to do what you want when it's time to add the glue. So that's why I do that. And the glue, again, is going to ensure that the fibers of the paper intermingle with each other, to some extent, not a lot. All right, so now that I've got that and have the glue in, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Push them all one way and burnish. And if any glue seeps out, make sure you clean it up right away or else it's going to get all over the place. And do it the other way. And there is glue that came out, so I'm going to clean that up. Then I will pull it towards me and burnish. And then I'll let it dry with them all sticking straight up. So there you go. That wasn't so difficult, was it? In, in lesson. If it doesn't come out looking the way you want it to, throw it out and do it again. It's just a piece of paper. It's not the end of the world. This is a good time to double check and make sure that everything's straight. And that's what I use the, the tables on my um, surface. So by putting it up against the top and the side, I, it, I just want to make sure that it's straight. What I've, people have told me, oh, my pages come out crooked. Well, the reason that happens is usually it starts from when you're uh, scoring the lines to begin with. So make sure when you score, your paper is up against the side and up against the top. And if it doesn't meet that way, then you've got a, a piece of paper that's crooked. Maybe it wasn't cut straight. Cut it again. Make sure you start with a straight piece of paper and do your best to make sure it stays to the top and to the side and you um, and you score straight. I mean, you can't not score straight. And I'll tell you another secret. See these lines here? That's how I know immediately, because I, I always have half-inch gusset, I mean, 
half inch hinges and three eighths gusset. Almost always. Sometimes I'll change it, but I magic markered where that is. So it makes it quick and easy. I have five hinges. If I want to do six, I can add an extra one. If I want to do four, I just stop. And so that just helps me figure out where I need to score. So now that we've got that, let us grab our cover and add this to the cover. So we're going to dry fit this and see exactly where it's going to go on the page. So I pay attention to how much room there is between the first hinge and that little channel where the spine and the cover meet, top and bottom, and then on the other side as well. You want it to be even. Now you could go over, have an eighth of an inch with the first one and half an inch, eighth of an inch from the channel to the first hinge and a half an inch from the last hinge to the next channel if you wanted to have a lot of stuff in your back of the book. In this case, we're just gonna center it. We're gonna center it top and bottom so you will have about a quarter of an inch top and bottom and about a quarter of an inch on each side. Easy enough. So let's, let us add glue. So we've got this beautiful back to our hinge and there is a channel where every hinge meets that we're going to start to add glue. That'll be the first place we add glue. That way when the hinges are down there, they're not going to move. Then I'm going to fill in each of those channels. I'm staying away from the edge of the paper here because the glue will move along and it will fill in. And then I'm going to go maybe about an inch from the first hinge on our wing. I still want to have some room on the wing to hold on to it. And you sort of have to move quickly, especially if you're in a dry climate or if it's very hot. So now I'm going to eyeball it because I know where I wanted it to go. Make sure it's even. You don't want it to, to be wonky on the top or the bottom. Okay, and then I lay it down. I don't push it yet. Once I lay it down, I start at the center. So there's four gussets. We're going to start at one, the second gusset. And I'm going to just gently move the glue top to bottom just a couple of times. And now this hinge to the right of where we just were, I'm going to move that to the left. And you might notice that the whole hinge moves. And that's okay. That's what we want it to do. We want to get the hinges as close together as possible. So do the same thing. Go uh, move the glue just so it sticks. Now I'll move that hinge up. The next hinge, which is the second one, We'll move over and do the same with that very first gusset. And then we'll move those hinges, go to the last gusset, and push that glue in the hinges. Now we'll go to the first hinge and move that towards the center and move everything. And now I'm going to actually put all the glue down because I, I feel it here, it's sort of clicking. So it's starting to dry already. I want to make sure it dries where I want it to and not just on the paper. So now I'm going to take my bone folder and this is a non-stick bone folder. If you have one that's made out of any other surface that's non-stick, be really careful, especially if you're using black cardstock, that you don't push down on the paper so hard that it makes it shiny. That's why I like this. It, it works real well. But I'm going to gently go down in the channel, in the gusset, close to all the hinges, just to make sure they're adhered, especially right where those hinges meet the paper. And then I'm going to go into that channel, you know, where we had the book cover and Again, going a couple of times, I'd rather go four or five or six times, pushing a little more every time to get that paper to go into the channel. And eventually that paper is going to stick to the adhesive we put on either side of the spine when we first made the cover. 
and you'll ensure that if you open up the book even more. And so I'll do that with this one too. Gently, gently, gently go back and forth. Move the cover at the same time and push. Oops. Now let us take a little more glue and just fill in. I don't have to fill in too much, but fill in where we did not put glue down because we needed something to hold on to. And then just burnish that. And let this dry while we go make the pages. Fabulous, huh? Let it dry flat though, and we'll make the pages. All right, we are making very, very basic base pages. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to start simple and you can add different elements to the pages. But we're starting out with a simple page. And basically a page is going to be a tube. And the reason it's a tube is because the tube is going to fit into our hinge. And that's how we make the book. So to make the simple tube, you'll need two pieces of cardstock one five by seven and one five by eight for each page. So since we're doing five pages, we'll need five pieces five by seven and five pieces five by eight. Now let's get a scoreboard and grab the five by eight. I'm gonna put that eight inch side at the top of the scoreboard. Make sure you're pushed up against the side and the top. And we're going to score at half an inch. Then we're gonna, you could do it one of two ways. In this case, we're just gonna score right now at seven and a half. If you wanted to, you could have scored at half, rotated and scored at half. Six of one, half a dozen the other. I'm gonna grab my scissors. And we're gonna do what we call miter the corners. And we do this so you don't, you don't see the different um, you don't see the paper. So the best way of doing it is move your scissors till it sort of stops in that channel of your score line and do a snip. It's not quite at a 45 degree angle, but just a little snip. And then rotate the paper and do the same. Now the score line's on the bottom, so you have to judge where that is with your scissors and do a snip. And so do that to all four corners. All right, and then we're going to fold the paper and burnish. Should you fold into, into the bump or into the valley, people will say. You know what, I don't think it really matters. I tend to fold into the bump, um, but if you use good enough paper, it doesn't matter either way. All right, so now we'll take our five by seven piece. So now you see this is now they match. They're they're both five by seven, and this is what I do. So I take the one piece and put it into the other one and let that little tab stop. I'm making sure the sides are perfectly even, and then this is going to stop right at that tab. So I sort of hold it with one hand, lift this up, add glue to the tab. You don't need to go crazy and then let that fold down. Since we've already made sure it was even, but I'm double checking, then it's even. And then all you have to do is lift this other side up, fold this one, this tab down. And there you go. There is your tube, which is your page. Okay, here's a variation. Okay, the variation is we're going to put the paper inside those two tabs. If it's if it um, sticks out a little bit when you're trying to close it, you want to trim it down a smidgen. When I say a smidgen, I mean oh sixteenth of an inch maybe. So I did that, and I'm going to. Make sure the sides are even 
and I'm going to add glue to the tab that's on the outside of it. We'll do both at the same time. And then fold the tabs over on the top. So now you might say, well, what's the difference? So here the tabs are in the inside. And here the tabs are on the outside. The difference is when you're putting something into these pockets, because now they're pocket pages once we put them in, it might get hung up on your tabs. Doesn't happen to me, so I don't worry about it but some people like the inside to be free of any tabs. So that is up to you. In any case, let's get the other tab, other uh, pocket pages done, and then I'll show you how to put it in the book. All right, I've got my book with this hinge in, on it, and I've got my pages. Before I put the pages in, I'm just gonna one more time, because now they've had a chance to uh, cure, dry, the glue's dry. I'm just going to work it a little bit with my bone folder just to make sure that there's going to be movement. Now, this is seven inches. Our pages were seven inches, but once you've folded, I mean, you lose a little. So it's not exactly seven inches. It's six and uh, 31, 30 seconds. In, in other words, it's a little smaller than this. You could have done, you could have made this smaller. So instead of making that seven inches, you could have made it six and three quarters or even six if you wanted to. But I, I'm just trying to keep it simple. So I'm sticking with the seven. I'm taking my scissors and I am going to cut a little bit off of each of the hinges. I'm going to just cut a triangle off. So I'm going to go a quarter of an inch from the top of the hinge to the uh, quarter inch, and then just go half of the hinge. Don't go any further than half of the hinge. So just a little, little triangle. So I'll do all those on this side. Once I get that last one, I will is come in a little closer and show you. Okay, I will do this last one. The sun is starting to come in here, so it's gonna, I'm getting faded out. Let me see if I can get something dark. All right, I put that black piece of paper there. If I can hold it a little bit. All right, I'm gonna grab my scissors and just cut just like that, okay? That was a better illustration. Now I will do the bottom side. If it's not exactly a half an inch over and halfway, it's not the end of the world. None of this is the end of the world. We're just playing with paper. All right, now I always start from the back of the book. I don't know why, just have it. I'm gonna add glue. Now you stay on the top half of the page. Don't go any further than halfway down, not the page, halfway down the hinge. I guess we could have dry fitted this first, but I know it's going to fit. And then I put my tube over that hinge and go down, which will go down to about an eighth of an inch showing. And then I will burnish. I'm making sure it's straight as far as even here, parallel to the edge of the book, parallel up here. And that is fabulous over there. I'm going to double check the back. And that's a good stick there too. So there is our first page. So again, you're going to take your tube, go over the top of the hinge, sort of straddle how it sits on the hinge. Make sure it's even. You've got an eighth of an inch parallel all the way across, and then you're good. And make sure it's even with this other page. So we'll do another one. I'll add glue. You really don't need too much. I used to use the tape, but I'm much more confident that this book will last years and years and years with the glue than I was confident with the tape. 
Okay. If you get any seepage of glue, clean it up. And we're good. And then burnish. All right. And we will do the other ones as well. And then once we start making pages, I'm going to make all of the pages a slightly different so you can get some ideas. Like one we'll put a pocket on, one we'll put on a belly band, and then we'll do different kinds of flaps. So you can see all the different things you can do with a page. Now, if I do a pocket on one and you like the pocket and, and that suits your purpose, maybe you're somewhere where you have a lot of um, tickets or newspaper clippings or you know whatever you're documenting you have a lot of ephemera and then you want the pockets or maybe you're making the book for somebody who has um, you just want to make a quick brag book maybe you don't want anything maybe you just want to put pictures on the 10 pages and hand it over and you're done so you can mix and match once we've made the base page however you want. So I'm raising up the last pocket, I, last page, I'm talking pockets now. Last page I put in to make sure it's even with the last one. And we're good there. And I have one more. And we'll put this last page in, which actually is the first page. And we are good to go. And there is our mini album with pages. Are you excited? You've gotten this far? Now these are pocket pages and the page is five by seven so we will put in probably a six and a half by uh, maybe a six and a half by depends on if I'm going to put a tab on. We'll, we'll probably make them simple. Put six and a half by five and a quarter page. That way you can still put four by six photos on that. So we will now um, make different pages. So I'm going to give you the measurements, tell you what it's for. You can write it down, then cut it and label it just as I did. So for page one front, we need a piece of cardstock that's six by three. This will be a pocket page two front, and I'm only doing the front of the pages, we're leaving the black back plain so we can just add photos. Page two front, it's going to be a belly band, so you need an inch and a half by eight. Page three front, you'll need a flap, which is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Page four front, another flap, three and three quarters by four and a quarter. Page five front, you'll need two pieces cut at three and a quarter by seven. We're going to have corresponding flaps. Then the back inside cover, you'll need a piece five and three eighths by six. This is going to be a top flap. And back inside cover for the bottom pocket, you'll need six and three eighths by four. So if that went too fast for you, just rewind it and uh, record it, write it down, and then cut them. And then we'll get started with page one front. So for page one, you're going to put the six inch side at the top and score it half, rotate, score it half, rotate, and then score again at half an inch. 
and then we're going to again miter the corners so on those two ones at the top you're going to cut from the score line down about a 45 degree angle and then where you've got this crisscross of score lines we're just going to cut straight across on both sides so that is the pocket I'm going to grab my bone folder and we will I'm turning upside down and folding and burnish on all those score lines Okay, let's grab our book. Okay, we're going to do this slowly, and I'm going to show you a trick on, on pockets. So I'm just going to add glue to that bottom flap, just the bottom one, and we will make sure that is lined up to the bottom of the page. And then burnish. Okay, and here's a little trick. I'm going to grab a little piece of scotch tape and we're going to cover that flap. And why we do this is when you're putting something in, so if you don't have your page, your paper covering that, so this way it doesn't get hung up on there. And then we can go ahead and glue the rest of the the flap, the pocket, do the two sides. And of course, anytime you're putting something on, make sure you burnish real well. All right, so that's page one. Page two is real simple. So this is a one and a half inch by eight, and this is a belly band. So what we do is put the long side at the top, score it half an inch, on both sides. So score it half an inch and seven and a half. And I suppose we could mater. Oops. There we go. And then I'll fold and burnish on those score lines, of course. And then we're going to grab our book add glue to both tabs and I'm going to center that on the bottom of the page and center it now at the top. Oh, my writing's upside down but still. There we go. So there's a belly band. Belly bands are fun because you can put something in there and it's not going to move anywhere. All right, now we're going to go to the next one, which is page three. We're going to have a flap. So in most paper collections, you get journal and cards that are three inches by four inches. If not, you can just make some with a piece of pattern paper. I'm going to put the five and three quarter side at the top and score it half an inch and miter. And we are going to put this, oh, just at the top of the page. You can center it. You can put it to the side. I'm going to put it to the side just so um, it won't completely cover up a photo. I mean, you might have a photo with a person on a swing set or something, and you can still see the head or the swing over here. So I'm just moving it over to the side. You, you know, it depends on what pictures you've got. All right, the next one is going to be, I probably should have done it differently and had a flap, um, I don't need my phone, a flap and then uh, skipped a little bit. I'm gonna turn this upside down and, um, and then had another page with a flap, but I didn't think that far ahead. I'm gonna miter. and fold and burnish. So guess what we're gonna do with this? We're gonna add some glue to this and put it on the side. I'm gonna go about an inch down from the top and that's where that's gonna go. Now, I don't need to put the tape here because you're gonna cover that whole page with uh, pattern paper. 
And make sure when you put your flaps down, you burnish real well. All right, and the next one is the two pieces that are three and a quarter by seven. So we're going to take both and put the short side at the top and score at half an inch. We're going to fold and miter and burnish. that. Miter this one as well. And fold. And burnish both of those. And so what these are going to do is one's going to go to the left of the paper, one or the left of the page, one's going to go to the right. It's going to be like like a door. And when you put it down, don't put it at the, the hinge, put it at the edge of the tube, the edge of the paper that you made, the edge of the base page. And we'll do the same with the other one, but put it on the right side. Now, we could have made it a little smaller, but I want it to overlap, so it overlaps about half an inch, and that is perfect. So make sure you burnish real well on that. And there is page five. All right, back cover. So first, let me explain something. I asked you to cut this six and three eighths by four. The paper is five and a half. When you score half an inch and half an inch, that means you need to make the paper, the, the pocket, an inch bigger. But why am I having you do it six and three eighths instead of six and a half? Because I don't want to go too far in and affect the the closing of the page. So it's going to be an eighth of an inch smaller than the width of the page. And you'll I'll illustrate it once we uh, put it on. So we'll put the long side at the top, the six and three eighths, scored half an inch. Score at, well, let's do it this way, rotate. Score at half an inch, rotate, score at half an inch. To me, that, that is easier sometimes than the other way. All right, we also have a piece that's five and three eighths by six. You're going to put the six inch side at the top, score half an inch down that five and three eighths side. So we cut across those X's for the pockets. Burn, uh, miter those corners, and at the top we're going to miter these. And I will clean up all those triangles in just a second. All right, let's fold and burnish. on the score lines. And we'll do the same with this. We'll add glue to the bottom. Add it to the bottom of the book, but make sure you stay close to the right hand side of the page. And then a little piece of tape. And then we'll do the sides. And that will close like that. And then we'll add the top flap. To the top of the page and again stay to the right hand side of the book so you're right above the pocket as opposed to centering it on the page and something else I like to do with my flap so there is the flap so that'll open like that now I'm gonna round the corners because to me 
a flap has to have rounded corners. I think it's just me. I think I'm a little crazy that way. But that is the construction of the book with all the different elements. And like I said, you can go through and if you want all these flaps, these uh, flaps for a three by four inch card on every page, you could do that. If you want a book that just has these, you could do that. There are lots of things you could do. I also want to add just another flap to the pages. So this is five and a quarter by seven. With the five and a quarter side at the top, I'm scoring it half an inch. And I'm going to miter the corners and fold and burnish on that score line. And like I said, you could put this anywhere you want in the book. I am going to, I can put it on the back of one of the pages and see that adds lots more of a page. So now it's going to be an eighth of an inch smaller, so I could put it here, than the pages. Um, I'm going to add it here. So I'm going to, and you could put it on either side, the right side or the left side. I'm going to add the glue to the flap and I'm going to put it on the left side of the page that has that one of the flaps and the reason being is we could go either way we could have the flap in the front and then you open it and you get all that real estate or we could have it that way too and once I decorate it, I will decide. So that is the basic construction of the book. Next, I'm going to do the walkthrough and show you how I've decorated. To decorate it, I usually cut paper about a quarter inch smaller than the page. So if I were putting pattern paper on this page, this is five by seven, I'm going to put four and three quarters by six and three quarters inch. So I have a uh, an eighth of an inch border around it. So that is generally how I cut the paper. So here's a quick walkthrough with the pattern paper on the pages, but I haven't decorated it with embellishments or the photos yet. The cover has several layers, the pink, then the orange, and I did the same for the inside. You'll notice these papers are not on permanently. I just ATG'd a little, a couple of dots, just so I could do a walkthrough. And if I want to change things, I still can. So again, here's the flap. I did corresponding polka dots on this one. I did that plaid with the orange and pink flowers on the opposite page. Plain on the left side and on the right, you've got those windows. And then there's the flap for the back. I need to do the uh, circle style closure, there's the back. And I'm going to show you the circle style closure right now, but I wanted to do that quick walkthrough. So for the circle style closure, I've already put holes in the flap. I'm going to take this out of the pocket before I go any further. And I finished the inside. So the inside flap just has that plain paper and it's adhered. And this pink paper cardstock is adhered as well. But the paper that's going to cover the flap, I already have that hole in, and the paper that's going to cover, I'm sorry, the paper to cover the pocket has the hole, and here's the paper for the flap, and you can see there's the hole right there. So to do the circle closure, I have four circles of the cardstock, and I've already made a hole in the center, and I'm going to put glue on two of them, and then just simply stack one uh, white on top of the other white and the same with that one. I just want to make it a little stronger and it's not really heavy weight cardstock. Try to get the circle to be even and add some more glue to the top and I'm going to take the circles I've made with those pattern paper, the black with the dots on it, looks like a donut to me, and I put that on the top of those. So that's all there is to making the circles. Now don't forget there's a hole in the center. If I could have, I would have used that button, but there's a, not another button to correspond as far as size. 
in the uh, chipboard embellishment set. All right, so now I'm going to take a length of string. It's probably about eight inches, and I'm just going to go through the scent, the hole, turn it upside down, and grab a little bit of scotch tape and tape that string down. That way I know it's going to stay. I'll add glue just to make sure. I'll take one of my brads and put it through the circle and I'll put that in the hole I've already made in that pink pattern paper. Now I'll add a little bit of glue just to make sure everything stays. Go around the perimeter and add some glue and adhere that right on top of the bottom pocket. Now I already know it's centered um, because I determined where I was going to put the hole before I put everything together. Add another brad and put that brad in through the pattern paper. Make sure the brad will stay. And again, I'll add a little bit of glue around the brad. It's really not going to go anywhere, but that way it doesn't rotate. It's just a personal preference. Add some glue to the back and then put that on. Make sure it's centered. I think I need to come down a little bit at the top. There we go. And that's really all there is to it. I just have had several people ask me how I do that library style closure and I almost forgot. Oh, if you want to, you can tie a knot at the bottom. Um, I've tied a knot. I've put embellishments on. I've had uh, little charms that I've been able to put on. It's entirely up to you. I just think at least putting a knot gives it a little more of a finished look than if you left it plain. And you could have used a magnet, but I just liked this style closure for the back pocket. And that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you've enjoyed the craft room tour. Now you can see where it is I create in. Don't forget to do the things, the like, the subscribe, the bell for notifications so you know when new tutorials come out. And that's what I have for you today. Thanks so much. Have a fabulous day.